because to me that's always the best part of doing this. Okay, we're a network, as I said, of affiliated organizations. I can read it here. And right now we're in Morocco, Egypt, Palestine, uh, Jordan, Gaza, West Bank, and uh, most excitingly, uh, we're going to be in Tunisia. I've been going there recently, and with the Arab Spring has created a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. These people get it. They really understand it. I'm, I'm just, um, I go to cert con certain countries and I meet with ministers there, and a lot of the government ministers in the Middle East, they look at me and their eyes glaze over and they know they have to spend a half an hour and say appropriate things, but they're, their minds are elsewhere and they're glancing at their watches or their, uh, their PDA goes off. But they put in the time because they know they have to. Not the case in Tunisia. The Tunisians want what we have. I attended meetings there a few months ago where they would not let me out of the room. They said, no, 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 no. We need these curriculums, we need these trainings now, not next month, not next week, and it was a pleasure. Uh, and so we are putting together a board of directors there and that's the key part. We want to build a standalone foundation. Another key part of that may sound odd, is we want them to have skin in the game. So we need them to put in money. Uh, for instance, when I went to Yemen, uh, we started that operation about two and a half years ago. Uh, CCC, Consolidated Contractors, the large construction company, had told the head of his, that office that they better make us successful. And so they worked real hard and we had a room assembled of about 30 of the leading business people there. Probably half of them spoke English, which was good. And I gave a presentation similar to this. And at the end, I said basically, but in a more polite fashion, and got tr translated into Arabic, that we wanted to see a show of $50,000 from the local Yemeni. Otherwise, we're going back to Dodge and sh closing up shop. The Yemeni raised their hands, and this is a poor country, average income, $237 per person. Think about that. And they raised their hand, and they said, we're going to give 5,000, 10,000, critic that I am from Brooklyn and cynic. And I said, oh, likely, likely chance. Well, I was wrong. Uh, something must have gotten lost in the translation. Because within a year and a half, they gave us uh, over half a million dollars of local money. Just astounding, so unexpected. So, um, and so in Yemen, we are moving forward at breakneck speed. Um, we're in Sana, we're in Tayas, uh, we're opening up an office in Aden. When you had all of that fighting there, uh, we were calling continuously. We had 96% attendance in our class. Kids, instead of being out in the street protesting, wanted a job, and that's what they focused on. At one point, uh, the US government, the State Department, cut funding to Yemen during the, the fighting because they said it's just too dangerous. Because we are a local foundation, because we had local staff, uh, only in the US and the, all the local staff were indigenous, uh, we placed a call to, the, um, to Hillary's ed, head of the Middle East, a woman by the name of Tamara Wittes, and I spoke to her for almost two hours in a combination of logic and pleading, mostly pleading probably. Uh, at the end of it, uh, I explained why it was important that funding can be continued in, Yemis, in Yemen and uh, 48 hours later, we got a green light. We were the only one that were exempt and continued to get funding. And so we continued our work. Um, where, what else have I not covered? Um, Egypt, I may as well take a few minutes on Egypt. Egypt is not Tunisia. Egypt is going through a very hard time. I was on the phone with our Egyptian staff. And then as soon as I come back, I'll be meeting with our Egyptian chair in New York. He's flying to New York to talk to me about what's happening. Egypt is a difficult situation. Uh, the army controls a very large portion of the country which is creating stability but also creating issues. For a while they had an edict uh, preventing outside po poll monitors. They've backed off a bit on that and there will hopefully be some compromise. But you know, as, as uh, was pointed out earlier from the Bill Clinton um, slide, it's all about the economy. And if the Egyptian economy can move forward I think we will have a just civil society. If it can't, uh, it's going to be not a good situation for Egypt or for the region. And right now, you have 600,000 jobs that have been lost because of the situation with tourism, just by itself, not even counting the spillover from that. 
and you have ongoing protests in Tahrir Square, um, everybody has a very high expectation, but the economics are not in line with that, and so they have to figure out how to go forward. The good news is we are moving forward rapidly in Egypt. Uh, we're expanding our operation. We've had much more funding than we've ever had. Uh, the bad news is it's just harder to get employers to move forward because of the uncertainty. Nobody wants to put out capital when they don't know what this society is going to look like, whether it's going to be another repressive regime, whether it will be fundamentalist, whether the Muslim Brotherhood will come over. and with, So therefore, people are hoarding their capital. They're not investing. They're not expanding. They're not hiring, which is problematical, though. Somehow, we are getting jobs, and we're getting jobs placed, and, and the system is going forward. Another thing I want to mention is that when we do get a youth into a job, that's not the end of our involvement. That's just the beginning. Uh, it's important that our graduates continue to learn, continue to grow. And we have a couple of tools for that. One of which is that we, uh, we have free from manpower, one of our strategic um, donors, advisors, we have courses that manpower charges globally thousands of dollars per individual. We get those courses for all of our graduates for free, and it continues to enable them to grow. Uh, so, for instance, in Yemen, I was shocked to see that the donations of our graduates are sustaining the entire alumni association with all the facilities we have and the computers. The donations are making that association self-sustaining. We're no longer putting money into it. If we weren't a nonprofit, we'd start pulling money out of it. We're not going to do that. We're just going to allow it to grow and, and give more services. In Egypt, which does not have a history of philanthropy, of, do of donating, other than, of donating, other than at the mosque, 60% of our graduates are giving back money. It just, it just boggled my mind. And um, I don't know that that's the case in the last couple of months, but it was up until about two months ago when I was there, uh, right before the Arab Spring. 60% on. I saw people coming in, kids coming in, all sorts of manner of dress, and handing money over uh, because they want to see it happen. And one of the things that those kids get in all of the region is they get relationships. You know, I'm lucky. I grew up in a meritocracy. And if I worked hard and made things happen, I got promoted and I got rewarded. Not necessarily the case in the region. In the region, there's something called WASTA. WASTA basically means who you know and what you know. And who you know is quite, fr my, fr quite frankly more important than what you know. And what we're doing with our alumni association and with our boards and with senior business people is we're creating a whole new brand of WASTA for those that have been marginalized. Okay, where are we? Let's see if this thing works. No. There we go. Okay. Um, we have huge unemployment. 23% of the youth in the Middle East and North Africa are unemployed. And that's obviously twice the global, the global. One of the things that's not on this slide, maybe on a subsequent one, but I, it's a good time to say it now anyway. In the region, going to college has just the opposite effect that it has, for instance, in the U.S. In the U.S. right now, unemployment is roughly hair under 10%, the official numbers for those that want to believe them. Um, those that don't, they're 16%. But <laughs> uh, the reality is that college graduates in the U.S. have half the unemployment level of non-college grads. In Jordan, where I was recently, where we were doing a lot of work, unemployment